Welcome to The Table Podcast, where we discuss issues of God and culture, brought to you by Dallas Theological Seminary. Welcome to The Table, we discuss issues of God and culture. I'm Daryl Bach, Executive Director for Cultural Engagement at the Hendricks Center here at Dallas Theological Seminary. And my guest today is a returnee, a veteran of foreign wars, uh, <laughs> Naima Millette, and, and uh, she is our, our, our woman on the scene in, in Hollywood. Uh, she uh, is a professional actress and a graduate of the seminary's media program. I'm glad to have you back. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me back. I love it. I love it. I love it. So. Well, we love having you. And, and what we want to do is discuss kind of the state of faith films yes. in, in Hollywood and kind of where we are in this season where we seem to be coming up with a lot of projects either in film or on television mm-hmm. related to uh, – Related to the faith, and then there's one film in particular we want to talk about called *The Good Lie*, which is, yes. which is not done well at the box office, but really is, a, I think, a very worthy uh, film. So, um, so let's start there. So, so tell us where are we? Where, what's going on in the in the faith and faith and film world? It um, this is a wonderful time to be a part of the faith and film world. Like um, the. Um, when Hollywood announced at the beginning of the year that this was the year of the Bible, mm-hmm. um, that was a huge announcement that literally, you know, we could all look at and go, hey, this is going to be a phenomenal year. But not just this year, mm-hmm. it will be this year, next year, the year after. And that's how the projects kind of roll out. Mm-hmm. So, where we are, mm-hmm. I mean, we still, I mean, we've already had a huge kind of first six months mm-hmm. with. Um, Heaven is for real. God is not dead. I throw Noah in there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Well, he did. Just, he did. You know. He did preside over a flood. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and uh, and um, and those. I mean, those movies did so phenomenal in the box office, mm-hmm. including a Son of God. Mm-hmm. That. I mean, it really kind of set records and set paces, and Hollywood has taken notice and said, yes, we will continue to do this. And so the the last part of this year, we have uh, Exodus, God mm-hmm. and Kings coming out, right. which will be December. Um, the Good Lie, of mm-hmm. course, is, is one that has just come out. They redid mm-hmm. Left Behind, um, mm-hmm. in, and uh, that one... That um, movie got left behind. <laughs> they did, yeah. but they did redo yeah. it. They yeah. redid it big budget-wise. Right, they, right. they tried. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then also December, this will be a, a really cool um, award season to watch uh-huh. because there's a movie um, – there's a movie called Unbroken mm-hmm. that's coming out and is actually about a believer. Hmm. They don't focus so much on his faith, mm-hmm. um, but Angelina Jolie mm-hmm. directed it. Mm-hmm. But this is a man of incredible faith, mm-hmm. and his real story um, will be an inspiration. This is the to, war. To is this volumes. a war? Is the war yes, veteran story? Absolutely. Okay. And absolutely. I heard about this, and I heard about the controversy mm-hmm. that rotated around, which actually. Um, is a controversy that also uh, had, at least had the potential to go the same way in the movie The Good Lie, because the writer of that screenplay, uh, Margaret Nagel, or Nagel, I'm mm-hmm. not quite sure mm-hmm. how to pronounce her last name, yeah. uh, I spoke with her at the screening that I was at, and she told me the story about how there were several people connected with the the movie uh, what it, the movie production companies that yes. were overseeing the film, uh, wanted her to take a a lot of the biblical and faith stuff out, and she refused to do it because she said yeah. this is a this is a core part of the story as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and you could see it. Yeah. it plays itself out. Yeah. Um, and what I say, what I love to say about it, and we'll talk about it a little mm-hmm. bit later, is what was so impressed upon me with the Good Lie is it wasn't necessarily a faith based film, right? But it was a film about people of faith. Exactly. And so when it's a film about people of faith, you get it. Right. So Unbroken is right. about a man of faith, mm-hmm. and even though they don't necessarily focus on that part, uh-huh. you get it. Uh-huh. So Unbroken comes out, I believe, Christmas Day. Okay. Also Selma, uh-huh. the story of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Well, that'll uh, with, be interesting. with um, one of my good friends, um, David Ayolowo. Um, mm-hmm. That one comes out on Christmas Day. Um, and then, of course, Exodus, God, and King. So December, Christmas, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hollywood is bringing you Christian 
faith-based films for uh, Christmas, uh, people. Uh, wow, wow. <laughs> Easter and Christmas, Christmas and Easter. <laughs> yeah. Um, and of course, uh, AD. Right. Um, the coming, TV series, yes, the TV which is series. coming at Easter time. Mm-hmm, coming at Easter. Yeah. And I, I believe Mary will be out by next year as well. Okay. So that film has gotten pushed back and pushed back a uh-huh. lot of controversy. Uh-huh. Um, but. They 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 have said that 2015 will be the release date, so we'll see. We'll yeah. see. We'll so see. so there's a lot going on. There's just there's a lot going yeah, on. This yeah. is a great time to yeah. be a filmmaker and a creator of of art. Uh, if you are if you are going down this path where you really want to include faith base um, or faith themes in mm-hmm. your work, this is a great time. Well, let me ask you this question. I just we of course we just had Robert Johnston in here uh, to do a video on on movies and how to how to watch them really uh, and oh, how they impact us. I can't but, wait to watch that. Yeah. One. So, uh, but what what advice would you give to Christians as they walk into these films? Because I know for a lot of Christians, there's kind of this automatic default. Category Category that says, I'm going to evaluate this in light of how it lines up with the details of the book. What expectations should we have as we watch these kinds of movies and these kinds of efforts? Okay. For the independent films, mm-hmm. um, and as we saw with the Heaven is for Reals and mm-hmm. the God Not, well, Heaven is for Real was actually a studio film, um, but the God's Not Dead, mm-hmm. you know, like for those, the independent films, you can keep that kind of expectation mm-hmm. because um, those are films that are made by Christians for Christians with a Christian theme mm-hmm. and they it, it is gonna literally they're made to boost mm-hmm. the the faith of the Christian all day long mm-hmm. um, but for those that are more um, Exodus mm-hmm. Noah um, I again and mm-hmm. I think I said this when we when we talked about Noah we reviewed it yeah um, Exodus, I do. I would not. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take the book of Exodus with you to the theater. <laughs> I would not recommend uh-huh. going into the theater with the expectation uh-huh. that it is going to be jot and tittle, biblically based. Mm-hmm. I just think we and and you know I, we said it before, and people just kind of you know mm-hmm. miss it. Um, but I. I believe that the movies in and of themselves and the films can they still have a place and they have a voice and provide us an opportunity to have the dialogue. That's what I want that's what and, I want you to develop for. And so I believe that when we go into the theater, we go in to watch a good film mm-hmm. and then we're able to take the different pieces and have the conversations and the dialogues with our friends that may or may not be people of faith mm-hmm. and and dialogue about the movie itself mm-hmm. and, and and then we can bring in because these th- these are avenues to which we can discuss our faith in a very relevant and real way. They're door openers without being yes. mirrors. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And and I believe that if we go in with the expectation that this is is going to be a well made film, mm-hmm. mind you, mm-hmm. this is a studio film that they've spent a lot of money on, mm-hmm. and I mean, you know, the names alone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, Christian Bale is not signing up. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, he did Batman. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, a Dark Knight or whatever. I mean, he yeah. is not signing up yeah. to do Moses and Exodus, and yeah. it's going to be some floppy yeah. whatever like. He, he's going to be tied to something that is excellent. Mm-hmm. And so it's going to be a, an excellent made film. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that it gives us a beautiful opportunity to have the dialogues. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yeah, I don't, I'm not going to take my Bible and go, you know, do, yeah. do. I think when I tried to do that, you know, with one of, with one of the, uh, the series I was on TV, I got so angry. I was like, you know what, let me, <laughs> let me just watch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 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 we've we've gotten the we've gotten the Surgeon General's warning out of the way. Uh, uh, let, let's yeah. uh, let's talk about so 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 the 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 way to go into these movies is to not have too high an expectation about what it's going to deliver in terms of biblical detail, right. but it still may raise questions about what what the Bible story is, yes, the life choices that are put before us, that kind of thing, even though it may come at it from a different angle. And so from, from that perspective, it may actually open some real doors to have the real conversations. Is that the way in? That is. I, I absolutely believe that that is the way in. <laughs> and, um, and in the conversations that we have had with our friends, uh, like, and we have friends across the spectrum, mm-hmm. um, 
what I love is, and what we love, mm-hmm. is talking about the art. Mm-hmm. So we dialogue with artists about their art, and we have conversation with people about art because art is made to move us. Mm-hmm. We are supposed to have a reaction, mm-hmm. and then as we wrestle with art and wrestle with the messages and wrestle with the meanings, we begin to make sense out of of the things that go on in our own lives, mm-hmm. and and they're valid pieces of work. Mm -hmm. Whether or not I agree with the work or not, or agree with the artist who made it, Mm -hmm. does not negate the importance of the art itself. Does Mm -hmm. that make sense? So um, in the same way that a friend of mine is a a wonderful curator in Los Angeles and she does an art show, I go, I was just, you know, literally, like maybe two weeks ago, I was just at an opening, um, she had an an arts talk, and the whole room was full of artists, and we all dialogued about the art. Mm -hmm. We all have a reaction. Mm That is what the art does for us mm-hmm. and brings for us. So these movies, these films, they're works of art, mm-hmm. and they're meant for us to dialogue and wrestle with. Right. I think it would be a huge missed opportunity mm-hmm. if we throw up the boycott sign mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we're not going to go see this because it's not you mm-hmm. know jot and tittle, mm-hmm. word for word, the Bible. Mm-hmm. I think we go and see it. We embrace the you know the the art. We react to it. Mm-hmm. We interact with it. If we love it, yes. If we don't, you know, we talk about it. Mm-hmm. But let's get in there. Let's have the discussions mm-hmm. with culture and really you know um, try to understand one another. See, I put one of the things that I do when I go to these films with the expectation I think set at a level that is less than expecting a mirrored uh, Bible story is. is uh, one of the questions I ask is, why would a person reading the Bible see the Bible this way if it's different than the way mm. I might see it, you know? That's and, good. And get an insight into that's good. What, it, what is it that it's triggering that's causing it to be viewed this way? Why is this being brought out, that kind of thing? I and mean, that, that's, that's just one of many ways yeah. in. Um, yeah. But, I, yeah. I, but again, the point is, you use it as a launching point. It's an opportunity to have a conversation uh, like I say, it it allows you to have conversations you may have longed to have with your friends, but trying to come in through the ecclesiastical door, <laughs> they shut down. Now you come in yeah. through the Hollywood door, and all of a sudden, oh well, we can talk about we can this. Talk about it. And and yeah. so, um, so I, I see it as an opportunity sometimes to accomplish. Uh, and, and get into conversations you've longed to have that otherwise you might not have the opportunity to, to do. be able to have. That's right. Now, I do wish – I'm going to just say this because, yeah. you know, I'm in Los Angeles. Right. I, we're in the entertainment industry. I do wish that if you're going to spend $100 million on a movie, mm-hmm. I wish that it could be more biblically accurate. Right. You know, but hey – I'm a DTS girl, you know. We, I mean, I mean, uh, it is what it is, yeah, right? right, right. <laughs> now yeah. we're, you know, to a certain degree, we're we're a bit purist when it comes to the Word of God, yeah, <laughs> right? right? And we don't apologize for that. That's right. So I do wish that, yeah. but I don't have that expectation. That's right. Um, so in that regard, um, I understand that filmmakers are telling stories. And I'm grateful that they are finding a home in our Bible. Mm-hmm. And I'm grateful that we're able to pull these, these narratives out, bring them to life, and then have the discussions um, in culture about the Word of God. Mm-hmm. Because there is, there is so much more dialogue going on about the Word of God mm-hmm. these days. Mm-hmm. And I think that is precious and it's brilliant. I think it's absolutely brilliant. And I actually think God is behind it. That's so interesting. So I, I think yeah. that God is behind it. And I think that He is, he is you know, He is still driving. Driving the train. Yeah. Now I I'm he- the buzz that I hear. Now I'm here in Dallas. So it's a long way from the buzz in L.A. <laughs> all right. But the the buzz that I sometimes hear is is that you get you've got people asking questions about these stories and these narratives as they think about how to portray them that they haven't been asking, and and so it's drawing in. In conversations, you know, you may that may or may not show up in the film, but it is Absolutely. showing up in the minds of people as they're wrestling with what this content is and how to portray it. Absolutely, absolutely. And whether you are the producer, mm-hmm. the director, mm-hmm. or the actor, or mm-hmm. the writer, mm-hmm. you do you are now having to wrestle with these questions mm-hmm. and actually go to the text. Mm-hmm. So you are actually going to the Bible mm-hmm. and 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 beginning to understand and doing research mm-hmm. on it. Now you may choose to make a different choice, or mm-hmm. you may choose to bring out elements that are different because there's a lot. There's still a lot of creative license right, right. That, that is taken. But there are a lot it, of gaps. There are a lot of gaps. Yeah, you have yeah. to fill in those That's gaps right. too. Um, but isn't it great? Isn't it great 
that we are wrestling with biblical content mm-hmm. in culture mm-hmm. in a way that was not happening three years ago, four years ago, yeah. five years ago. So, right. so you've got you've got in your head looks like two two to three years worth of uh, of, of faith films that are that are on tap. Basically, yep. At least at least through um, 2015, going into the beginning of 2016. Now, I think I heard you went through the list, and there was one title I didn't hear that I thought was Which in one? the row. There's a movie on Pontius Pilate that's being developed. Is yes, that true? Yes, yes, and that one's with Brad Pitt. Um, okay. And- <laughs> Brad Pitt as Pontius Pilate, oh, or Pontius Pilate as Brad Pitt. Who knows? Okay. Yes, that is that one's also in the rotation, and uh, he did Fury, so he you know had to finish that one up. But I yeah. think this one might be the next one, or at least that's what we've been told. Okay. Um, and they have developed it, and he did he did sign on. He's attached to the project. So okay. from what we know, in terms of what's being reported, um, that is coming down the pike, and uh, and it's being put out there as more of a, you know, trying to understand his side of things uh-huh, uh-huh. and that nuance. Uh-huh. So we'll, we'll Who see. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. You yeah, know? well, You'll but, uh, you know, a conversation about Pontius Pilate would be a pretty interesting one to have in the I culture. I think so, so yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. So. Wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, uh, so. So we've got another couple of years of this. Yeah. Um, at we, least. At if, least. I mean, if these yeah. do well, there then will be others. Continue. They're going to yeah. come. Yeah, gonna they'll come. franchise it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to The Table Podcast. For more podcasts like this one, visit dts.edu slash the table. Join us next week for part two. Dallas Theological Seminary. Teach truth. Love well. Love well.